uh, ten minutes too short for Attorney General Emeritus, Senator <laughs> Emeritus, and uh, one who went to this school, yeah. and he was number 1,700, yeah. and one was just flown in, just to appear and fly out. <laughs> so please give me, give me time and be with me, okay. because I think that uh, your committee is very important. I thank you for inviting me to give my views to this important national dialogue. It is my prayer that you fully discharge your mandate for the well-being of our beloved country of ours depends on the issues you have identified for negotiations being successfully resolved. Let me start with the easiest, the establishment and entrenchment of the state offices I support. And in fact, way back in April 1992, I published a constitutional amendment to have that office plus two deputy governors. And as you know, during the national negotiations, which happened in 2007-8, again, we established that office. And as you also know, during the BPI process, mark you, the BPI was only challenged on procedure, how it was appointed. But the content of BBI are still there, and you can make reference to them. And the BBI, we did draft a constitutional amendment, and if you look at Article 107A, there we are provided for leader of opposition. And if you look at Part 2A, there we are provided for the post of Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister, which of course now is Prime Cabinet Secretary outstanding issues. Article 43 of the Constitution. Article 43 of the Constitution uh, gives us economic and social rights. That particular article is similar to, and in fact I know I drafted it during the committee uh, stage where I was a member, we borrowed from the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural rights. Therefore, the first thing to, which is important on that is to recognize that the primary responsibility to realize these rights right, lies on the government. A democratically elected government would have been voted into office on the basis of the manifesto and the pronouncement of its leaders on the policies and programs they would put in place to realize these rights once elected. The second point to take into account is that it is accepted that these rights are not immediately achievable due to the many reasons, including insufficient resources. Therefore, the responsibility on the shoulders of the government is to achieve these rights progressively. Uh, and there, the word progressively has been used both in our constitution, Article 21, 2 of the constitution, if you read it, and also in the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, to which Kenya is a party. So, it is there. The number one issue, as you know, in Kenya today is the unprecedented high cost of living which is causing unbearable suffering, misery, anxiety, and hunger among the populace in Kenya. As a prominent church leader has stated, we are strangling the lives of the poor Kenyans. History is replete with examples where people in countries facing a national crisis come together to fight the threat. Madam Julius Nyerere, used to say that just as in UK, for example, everybody came together to face the threat to the nation caused by Germany, which led to the Second World War. So we in Africa are in a state of war, and it is a war 
against ignorance, poverty, and disease. And this war 